This is the letter A episode of my Jewelry 101 Glossary series. Let's get started. Acoustic jewelry contains hidden messages using the first letter of each gem to spell out the words, also called sentiment jewelry, and can be seen on lockets that have a spot to place the hair of the loved ones. A unique way to celebrate courtship. It originated in Paris in the early early 1800s by Jean Baptiste Malario before being adopted in England. Began in the Georgian era but really flourished in the Victorian era spanning the 64 year reign of Queen Victoria. Popular with Napoleon Bonaparte, who commissioned acrostic jewels for both Empre Empress Josephine, his first wife, and Empress Marie Louise, his second. Some of the gems used in acrostic jewelry are diamond emeralds, amethyst, ruby, garnet, opal, lapis lazuli, pearls, and sapphires. Some of the words used in acrostic jewelry are adore, dear, dearest, regard, love, and je adore, which is I love in French. Some examples are amethyst, diamond, opal, ruby, and emerald to spell out the word adore, diamond, emerald, amethyst and ruby to spell out the word dear or jade amethyst diamond opal ruby and emerald for the word je adore the word acrylic is a type of thermoplastic and includes transparent and opaque in varied colors commonly known acrylics are lucite and plexiglass. It is skin friendly, which is lightweight, affordable, and comfortable to wear. Here are some examples of some acrylic pieces um, that I have in my collection. Um, you can see here I have this um, purple multicolored floral. Um, statement necklace and um, I'm gonna try to kind of get up close here you could see the um, acrylic is often just called plastic um, sometimes it's called celluloid um, but um, acrylic is um, something that you'll see often in statement pieces. You can see this one has some glitter infused into the acrylic pieces. Um, and you can see even the um, little rhinestones um, that are articulated in this necklace um, are also acrylic. Um, it's just a stronger plastic, more durable. Um, so there's that one. I'm trying not to make a shadow. I kind of am in a weird spot. So you can see there. Isn't this one cool? Look at that figure eight chain. I thought that was really cool. Anyways, and then here's the second one. You'll see this one quite often. Um, J. Crew has these charming Charlies. This one is unmarked, um, but you can see these big flowers. Um, again, the acrylic is more durable, um, and um, so it's less likely to chip um, like some plastics. So we've got this one. Let's see. Oh. and the petals are articulated or not articulated sorry faceted 
um, to kind of give it a little bit of a um, sparkle. And again, we have one of these statement bib necklaces. You'll often see these. These are just cabochons. Um, they're very strong. They're almost, um, you would almost kind of think that maybe they were glass, but they're just really strong and that's um, acrylic. Um, this is by Juicy Couture. Um, again, you'll see these um, J. Crew, Loft, uh, New York and Company. Um, J. Crew, did I see that one already? I think I did. Um, but you'll see those um, uh, with those with this kind of piece. And then, of course, you've got your traditional bangle bracelets. Um, bangle bracelets are most, most likely um, made of acrylic. Um, however, sometimes you have to be careful because sometimes they'll be Bakelite, which is an older um, plastic. And um, there is a simple way to test for Bakelite. You just have um, semi-chrome uh, polish. You can order it on Amazon. It's about eight bucks. Um, and you just put on a little piece onto the um, inside rim um, and rub it with a Q-tip. If the Q-tip comes out yellow, then you've got Bakelite. If not, you've got acrylic. You'll also see acrylic in clear, um, clear bangles. Uh, sometimes also called celluloid. See this one? Pink, clear. That one's kind of cool. Uh, this tortoise shell uh, bangle also acrylic and then this big old mama jamma um has you can see it has the clear it has the acrylic um the colored acrylic um so those are the different types that you might see um acrylic is used often in uh costume jewelry um and so these are some of the things that you would look for. Um, you know, it's a strong plastic. Um, it's lightweight. Uh, that way it's easier to wear when you have these big chunky pieces. Um, so yeah, here we go. There's your acrylic. Word adamantine. Have a luster like a diamond. Used to describe the luster exhibited by a diamond and gems with a refractive index of 1.9 to 2.5. The root word of adamantine derives from the Greek word adamastos, which means untamable. Throughout history, the word adamant has been used to reference anything that was composed of particularly hard material, diamond to other. Only those gemstones with a high refractive index tend to have an adamantine luster. The word aigrette, a feather-shaped piece of jewelry that is worn in the hair or a hat. A hair ornament consisting of a feather, plume, or spray of glitter, often accentuated by a jewel or a buckle. The fashion reached its peak at the end of the 19th century when the hats were often made entirely of feathers and occasionally even whole birds. Aigrettes were a logical accompaniment to the prodigious hairstyles and wigs favored during the Georgian period. Hair continued as a focal point and, and aigrettes were again favored during the latter part of the Victorian period. Xandrite effect, a phenomenon in which a stone appears to be different colors depending upon the type of light it is viewed in. 
The Alexandrite effect describes the phenomenon of light-induced color changes in certain materials. The effect was named after the Alexandrite mineral, but it is also used to refer to the similar process in which other minerals in other minerals. The Alexandrite effect was observed for the first time in 1830 in a chromium-bearing variety of chrysoberyl from the emerald mines on the eastern slopes of the Ural Mountains. In, in more recent times, it has also been observed in certain varieties of garnet, corundum, spinel, kyanite, fluorite, and monazite. It has been determined that the absorption spectrum of the alexandrite like minerals is characterized by transmission maxima in the blue, green, and red regions and by a transmission minimum in the yellow region. Okay, two examples I have of the uh, alexandrite um, effect is these uh, watermelon um, well, referred to as watermelon um, stones. And what I have here are a pair of earrings. As you can see, they kind of reflect two different or several different colors, um, the pink and the green. And they change within the light. Um, the Alexandra... Uh, Alexandrite effect is a little bit um, more pronounced. You'll see just one color um, and then it, in a different light you'll see a completely different color. So like this would be um, a, much closer than um, these ones because this one has the mixed. You can see all the colors at the same time. Whereas this one you look at it one way in one light and you'll see uh, the blue and then you look at it in another light and you'll see the purple and so these are uh, examples of the alexandrite effect alloy a substance composed of two or more metals united by being fused together and dissolving in each other when molten, used to strengthen gold. Alloys are used in different amounts to alter color. So yellow gold is gold, silver, and copper. Rose gold or pink gold is gold and copper. Green gold is gold, silver, and cadmium. White gold is gold, silver, and palladium. Sterling silver is silver and copper. Brass is copper and zinc. Bronze is copper, tin, and pot metal. And pewter is tin, lead, and tomany, silver, and copper. The word alpaca, alloyed metal that resembles sterling silver but has no actual silver content. Made of 60% copper, 20% nickel, and 20% zinc and tin. Sometimes referred to as German silver or nickel silver. This is an example of alpaca. Uh, alpaca is an alloyed metal uh, that resembles sterling but isn't actually silver. Um, a lot of times used in Mexico. And as you can see here, this has that tarnishing look um, to the silver that's indicative of alpaca. Um, and then also, you will see um, most often um, it will be marked 
alpaca. Uh, and there you go. There you can see the alpaca mark uh, along with Mexico. And as you can tell, it takes on that tarnishing as silver does, as sterling silver. Um, but it is less expensive and easier to, um, to get. Amorphous. An amorphous substance is one that has no regular arrangement of atoms. Some of those amorphous gems are jet, amber, ivory, and opal. Without form, does not have a regular internal structure. Amorphous materials can have either organic or in inorganic origins. This is a class of gems that is natural, but does not have any crystalline structure. They are truly minerals, but fossils or rocks by definition. I have two forms of amorphous stones, um, which are um, substances that don't have regular arrangement of atoms or um, internal structure. And two of those, are, there's four of them, um, but the two that I have are jet and amber. Um, I have these um, pieces and um, I'll start with the jet. Um, Jet is a decomposition of wood from millions of years ago, commonly the wood of trees of the Arucreacea. <laughs> I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably most definitely not. Um, jet is found in two forms, hard and soft. Hard jet is the result of carbon compression in salt water. Soft jet is made of a result of carbon compression in fresh water. Um, so um, I have um, this piece of jet here um, and one way to test for jet um, is to take a piece of um, unfinished ceramic uh, and it has to have no glaze on it, just this rough um, texture and you're going to take the piece of jet um, and rub it on the um, the stone and if it rubs black then you have um, you have jet if you have anything else that resembles jet um, and you try to scratch it on this it will not leave a mark um, and so that's how you will know. Also, uh, it will um, leave a small mark, but it most, uh, most times you can just rub it right out. The other um, is a um, piece of amber. Now the amber I have is are these two pieces here. Uh, you can always see um, the inclusions inside the amber. Amber is made from um, sap um, and you can test for amber by putting it under a black light um, and it will glow. Um, I don't think that you'll be able to see it because of my lighting here. Um, but I can take you, um, let's see, let's see, let's see if I can get it anywhere near dark enough so you can see it glow. I doubt it, but we will try it. Nope, you can't, it's not dark enough, not dark enough. Um, but most times it will glow, uh, a green color. Um, and, um, let me see if I can take you somewhere darker so you can really see. 
Okay, I've shut you up in my closet. Um, I have the ring here, and I will show you. Um, I will show you real quick. Okay, here we go. Uh, here's the piece of amber, and you can see as it is glowing green in the light. And that is how you can tell if a piece is amber or not. Amulet, a pendant or charm that is worn for its protective or magical powers. Originated in late 1600s and considered one of the most ancient forms of jewelry, amulets come in two forms. The first is made of the living for the day-to-day -day protection ease and encouragement. The second is made for the dead, for mummified bodies, made up of similar properties such as metal, stone, clay, glass. Both types of amulets are seen as providing security against danger, disease, or evil, or at least to keep these hazards at bay. Some amulets are hand-carved, while others are created from molds. I have two examples of amulets, uh, which is a pendant or charm that is worn for its protective or magical powers. Um, however, a lot of times you will see this in the Aztec culture with the Aztec calendar, and there we have this um, Aztec calendar, it has the sun, the Aztec sun, and then on this side it has um, the calendar, I'm sure they know how to read it, but I certainly do not. Um, they're usually large and round um, pen, uh, pendants. Um, another one here is round. Um, this one is um, not um, carved in any way or show any um, depictions. Um, however, it does have these tassels, um, you know, that obviously are resembling love and peace. Um, and so that would be something that would be considered an amulet. Um, this originated, of course, from the 1600s. And this one is of brass tone. Um, and this one is um, pewter. Analog. A watch that uses hands to show the time rather than an LCD display in watches. These are a quick example of analog, uh, which is um, used in the watch, which I'm sure you guys are all aware of. Um, so an uh, analog is the use of the arms for um, hours and minutes. And as you can see here, this one has the two for the hours and minutes, um, as well as some um, smaller ones that represent um, maybe different time zones or the calendar um, could be a number of different meanings to those um, and that's in comparison to the digital um, which you would often see um, in smartwatches nowadays or the old um, digital watch from back in the 80s and 90s ish time chain. Double links of uniform size connects to create a heavy, sturdy appearance. Anchor chains have flat oval shaped links that are interlocked and each link has a small metal bar in the center. The links are typically flat, but they can also be puffed, which creates a much tougher look. It's no surprise this chain is incredibly strong as it, has, it was inspired by the chain design used to secure large ships in harbors. I will be doing another video 
on all the different types of chains, so there will be more to come on anchor chains. The word annealing. Annealing is a process of heating a metal and then cooling it to make it more workable. As metal is worked, hammer, rolled, etc., stresses make the metal brittle. The metal molecules are pulled into a random structure during working. Annealing the metal makes the metal recrystallized, putting the molecules in an orderly structure. The temperature and the amount of time it takes for annealing a metal depends on what type of metal or alloy it is. Large pieces are annealed in an annealing oven. Small pieces are annealed using a blowtorch. Anodized. Anodized metal has been through an electrochemical process, which changes the molecule, molecular structure of the surface layer, giving it a thin protective film. In anodization process, the metal is placed in an acid bath. At the ano anode, <laughs> or positive end of the electrical circuit. And an electrical current is passed through the tank. This process causes a controlled oxidation of the metal surface to occur. Oxygen atoms bond to the surface atoms of the metal. Aluminum is often anodized, as, it, as is magnesium, titanium, and tantalum. Anodized metal has a lustrous sheen the anodizing process can produce colorful surfaces with blues, greens, yellows, and oranges. Word anthropomorphic, the attribution of human characteristics and qualities to non-human beings, objects, natural and supernatural phenomena. The term comes from two Greek words, anthropos, meaning human, and morph, meaning shape or form. One example I have of anthropomorphic um, is this sweet little bear. Um, usually anthropomorphic um, pieces, um, you'll see them a lot in brooches um, or like um, the slideshow of the moon with the face, um, but it's typically an animal that has characteristics of a human. So this one is clearly wearing clothes um, and it's holding flowers. So this is an example of the anthropomorphic. And this is a cute, sweet little bear. Word antique. A loosely defined and applied term meaning a hundred years or older. Items less than a hundred years old are referred to as vintage or collectible. To elaborate, something antique will always refer to something that is also vintage, but something vintage isn't necessarily antique. Vintage refers to something that is from an earlier generation. Antique refers to something that is over a hundred years old. Antique jewelry is a formal sense, is secondhand jewelry, and often timepieces that is older than a hundred years. Antique engagement rings and antique jewelry will be from the Georgian era, Victorian era, Edwardian era, or Art Deco era. era. As of 2023, antique jewelry is any piece that was created before 1923. When making a purchase of a piece of jewelry, understanding the difference can potentially save you a lot of money. Knowing the difference between these terms will help you decipher much of the information on the web. Age is very important to those who love vintage jewelry, and these terms are their building blocks. Knowing the definition will also give you a tremendous edge as a buyer. If you see the terms used incorrectly, it is a great warning that something, something is amiss. Vintage jewelry buying hinges strongly on the trust and education. 
If something is missing with a jeweler's education, you may need to start doubting the trustworthiness of the jewelry piece. Please note, if a, jewel, if a jewelry seller calls an 80-year-old ring as an antique, don't worry too much. As mentioned earlier, in the jewelry trade, anything over 80 years can be labeled as antique. If, however, your seller calls something that is younger than 80 years old as an antique, this is a sign of great concern. Jewelry definitions are also important because it will build your confidence as a buyer. Arming yourself with knowledge is the greatest way to buy effectively. The main types of antique symbols stamped on jewelry are purity marks, maker marks, assay marks, and date letters. Start by studying these to learn more about your jewelry's history, age, and ultimately va value. I will be doing more on videos on the age of jewelry, so there will be more to come with antique jewelry. Okay, this is the um, example I have of antique. Uh, this is a um, cameo that is from the 1900s. Um, it's very uh, simple and made of shell with the wire coiling around the edges. Um, anything that is a um, hundred years or older is considered antique. So anything before 1923. And this is from um, the 19, early 1900s. Aperture, the space on the face of the watch in which the date, day, month, or moon phase is displayed, also called the window. The most common aperture is the date window used to display the date often at 3 o'clock on the dial. Apertures are also used for other calendar functions, including day, month, year, and so on, on perpetual calendar watches. They can be used for GMT functions, rising hours, and other complications. Apertures can even reveal the movement through the face or case, as in the case of an open heart or skeleton design. Referenced in our history of the moon phases, both Jean Valier circa 1630 work of art and Thomas Mudge's first perpetual calendar watch finished in 1762 included a date complication. Additionally, Breguet featured date complications on its highly complicated masterpiece, such as no 217 completed in 1801. Many publications say the first date complication in watches appeared around the early 1800s. These statements may be due to the fact that the first examples found with only date complications came from this period. Sticking with the Breguet's theme in 1821, the brand delivered number 3,604 an 18 karat yellow gold pocket watch featuring only date aperture. This watch is among the first with only a date complication in addition to time. At the start of the 20th century, the world got around to wearing watches on wrists rather than on chain in a pocket. In 1950, a date complication made its way into the wristwatch case. That year, a watchmaker called A. Hammerly pat patented both a pointer date function and a dial aperture, showing the date of the week, the day of the week in a wristwatch case. Interesting, interestingly, the date shown through an aperture was not patented by its producer. I have a few examples of the aperture um, in a watch. Um, that is going to be um, this uh, little 
box, which I can't show you because on this one it is covered, um, but um, it is this little box here, often used for the date. Um, again, you'll see it here, and it will show the date. It can also show the month or the year. Here again, it's this little box you'll see on the right-hand side used to um, display the date, the day, month, or even moon phases, um, often called a window as well. This is an aperture. Applique. Appliques are decorative items of one material or metal affixed to another. Examples would be flowers or other small metal motifs riveted to a hard stone plaque, plaque or a plaque of stone, enamel or other materials applied to the top of the metal plate, an ornamental piece which is created separately and then applied to a piece of jewelry. There are three main types of applique, machine applique, hand applique, and fused applique. There are different variations of these types, smooth edge applique or wrought edge applique. Applique began as a practical way to mend holes in tents, blankets, and clothing. Examples date back to the ancient Egyptians and Middle Ages. Applique, um, which is the decorative material on metal, um, it can, um, you can see here, I've got this metal piece and you can see um, these heart designs in metal. Um, this is a Whiting and Davis piece, beautiful locket, um, but you can see the um, applique um, of these metal pieces right on top of the locket. These are often um, uh, depictions of flowers or ornate, ornate designs, swirls like these hearts um, are also often seen. Arabesque. A term used to describe ornate classic jewelry with intricate motifs which include scroll and foliage. Flowing scroll work epitomized by curly cues in low relief, often featuring heart shapes composed in geometric, geometric patterns. Circa 1530, arabesque designs were favored by Renaissance artisans, believed to have spread by Venetian Muslim traders became a predominant motif in jewelry design during the late Renaissance and Baroque periods. My examples of arabesque are these um, three pieces. I've got um, these. The, um, it's used to uh, describe, arabesque is used to describe um, intricate scrolling and foliage in a jewelry piece. And here we have, you could see these um, squirrel, swirls. Um, these aren't very um, intricate, but um, nonetheless, they are considered arabesque. This one is a little bit more um, indicative of arabesque with these scrolls. They kind of look like paisley scrolls and it's all the way around. Um, this is a scarf clip um, made in Germany. It's got the mother of pearl behind it and this beautiful arabesque sc scroll work. So arabesque would just be a really good descriptive word to use in your title when listing a piece like this. Another piece I have um, are these dangle earrings. You could see it's got this scrolling, um, very pretty arabesque um, scroll loops here in the, in the gold tone. Um, so just um, a great word to use uh, when descripti using descriptive words. 
Page setting refers to when a gemstone is set in a metal ring and secured by many metal claws, also known as a coronet or chaton setting. Jewelry designers and artists would incorporate architectural elements into their work. Guido Griff, a German-based goldsmith, is one. He has a video that shows how he makes an amazing medieval arcade gem setting for beautiful pendants. Arcades were particularly popular during the medieval period. An arcade is a succession of arches, each counter thrusting the next, supported by columns, piers, or a covered hallway or walkway. A video will be coming to follow on jewelry settings, and this setting will be explained in more detail. Here's an example of the arcade setting. Uh, if you look closely, you could see it goes um, up into a prong setting and has um, at least five prongs within this um, ring. Um, it's also known as a coronet or a chaton setting. Um, but you can see, to me, it resembles more like a crown. Um, whereas um, it was designed after architecture um, in uh, medieval time, in the medieval period. So. Um, there we have an arcade setting. You can see the prongs. You can see the art, like the arches. Word armlet. An armlet or amarilla is a bracelet that is designed to be worn on the upper arm or bicep. They have been a common jewelry form since ancient times in many civilizations. Armlets have been found in Etruscan tombs and were given to soldiers of the Roman Empire to be worn as a military decoration. This type of bracelet was also popular during the neoclassical era and continues to enjoy limited popularity into the 21st century. What's the purpose of an armlet? Armlet decorative bands, usually of gold, silver, and other metals, and sometimes featuring precious gems worn for ornament around the arm, especially the upper arm. Armlets have been worn since ancient times. In Assyrian art, for instance, deities, monsters, and men are shown wearing armlets. The arm cuff, also known as an armlet, dates back to ancient times, representing strength and courage. The cuff is typically made with an open back so it can easily slip over the wrist and onto the upper arm. Here's an example of an armlet. Um, this you'll often see as um, a long piece. Um, as you can see, it goes across. It will start from bigger and swirl downward um, and that is to wear on the upper arm and then as you know as it gets smaller um, the armlet will also get smaller you'll often see it depict um, snakes um, or you'll see just um, swirly pieces um, that will have an end um, piece with another scrolly uh, end piece. This is an armlet to be worn at the on your upper arm. Art Deco style and jewelry from 1910 to 1935. A style characterized by angular geometric shapes, zigzags, bold colors, molded or faceted check glass beads, plastics, such as celluloid or bakelite, and chrome. Art Deco received its moniker from the Exposition International des Arts 
decoratifs et industriels moderns held in Paris 1925. So sorry if I butchered all of that, which was largely dedicated to the jewelry. Types of construction in art deco jewelry would be round hinges with modern safety clasps, handmade pieces still used throughout. Some of the metals used in the jewelry was white gold, sterling, pot metal, German metal or alpaca, platinum, and white metal. Some of the materials used in jewelry in that time was bakelite, camphor glass, precious and semi-precious stones, enamel, and rhinestones. I have three examples of some Art Deco style jewelry. Um, Art Deco style was from 1910 to 1935 and is mostly characterized by angular uh, geometric shapes. And that is exactly what I have here. Um, we have these um, cubes. You can see um, the way that they're formed. They look like cubes. And this is a, an Avon necklace that in the 80s uh, and 90s, they um, did a lot of acrylic um, art deco style um, pieces. Uh, we also have this piece here. Um, this is made out of acrylic and you can see it's got the geometric shapes um, as the collar piece. Um, and then we have this pendant here, um, which is um, a little bit more modern, um, but it has the Art Deco style of angular straight edges um, and um, the use of the metal. Articulated. Jewelry constructed with hinges that allow for flexibility or other moving parts. An item that is articulated and composed of many movable parts allow realistic movement like snake light link bracelets that has many segments joined in such a way as to allow the bracelet to move in a snake-like manner. Brooches or pendants in the form of a fish made with join sections that permit movement in a swimming manner. Here's an example of articulated. This is going to be um, anything that has hinges to make the jewelry piece move. Um, so you, as you can tell, this fish is articulated to make it look like it is swimming. This is one of my very favorite pieces. Um, it uses a actual lure at a fish and it's articulated and it moves just like it's swimming. It's beautiful and that would be articulated anything that has hinges or coils to make it move art nouveau from 1890 to 1914 art nouveau was a style popular popular with from roughly 1895 until world war one Art Nouveau pieces are characterized by curves and naturalistic designs, especially depicting long-haired, sensual women. Louise Comfort Tiffany made arch archetypal Art Nouveau pieces. Popular in later half of the 19th century, a force of inspiration in the arts was the reopening of the trade routes with the East in 1858. Sometimes referred to as the whiplash, it was used to suggest movement and was an interpretation of shapes and lines found in plants, a woman's hair and feminine curves. Various themes and motifs in Art Nouveau jewelry, insects as fantasy creatures, especially dragonflies, butterflies, peacocks, and their magnificent plumage, swans, swallows, and cockerels 
swooped and swirled playfully and sensually throughout the Art Nouveau jewelry. Materials used during the Art Nouveau period were gold, gold filled, and sterling. Materials used in the Art Nouveau times are cut glass stones, precious and semi precious stones, enamel, and camphor glass. And the types of construction done are tube hinges, round hinges, C class handmade clasps, guilloche enameling, and long pin. This is an example of Art Nouveau, um, and it is characterized by curves and naturalistic designs. So you'll see flowers and leaves and petals, um, uh, oftentimes you'll see women with flowing hair. Um, this is the closest piece I have to an example of Art Nouveau. Um, and the Art Nouveau period was from 1890 to 1914. Um, and a lot of uh, jewelry is uh, designed in the Art Nouveau style. Here we've got some leaves, some gold leaves. Um, often you'll find uh, Art Nouveau pieces in gold tones. Um, it brings a more rich um, design to the piece. So anything with these, see the flowers and the leaves and the flowing um, pieces. Um, so that is a piece here for Art Nouveau. It's in crafts movement from 1880 to 1920. Arts and crafts were an artistic movement that produced handcrafted pieces toward the end of the 1800s. The movement flourished in Europe and th thus moved and, the, and flourished in North America between about 1880 and 1920. Pieces purposely looked handmade, incorporating hammer marks and simple cam cabochon settings. The arts and crafts movement also revived the art of enamel. The arts and crafts movement rejected opulence and industrialism in favor of the simplicity of good craftsmanship and design. Handmade, high quality, functional items were its hallmarks. A rebellion against the mass produced, machine made designs of questionable aesthetic value, common in the late Victorian era, Silver was the most commonly used metal to emphasize this bona fide style. However, from time to time, gold was used as well. Both metals were equally able to achieve the natural effect of the markings. Artists believed adding natural pieces would add their desired styles, such as stones. Stones were the perfect addition as oftentimes they were inexpensive. Commonly used stones were cabochon stones, including mother of pearl, moonstone, amber, and agate. Arts and crafts jewelers were C.R. Ashby. Ashby founded the Guild of Handcrafted Handcraft in 1888. Arthur Gaskin from 1862 to 1928. Georgina Gaskin, Arthur's wife, from 1868 to 1934. Fred T. Partridge, John Paul Cooper, from 1869 to 1933. Bernard Kuzner, from 1877 to 1956. Henry Wilson, from 1864 to 1934. Alexander Fisher, from 1864 to 1936. And Edgar Simpson. Here are some examples of the arts and crafts movement. Um, which was mostly handcrafted pieces of metal um, 
you can tell, you know, you'll see like the handmade, ham, hammered design, like in these earrings, um, you could see the hammered, uh, textured look of the metal, as well as, um, you could tell it's artisan made, um, when these, like this piece is the, um, silverware, um, bracelet and it is um you can tell designed with the metal uh we've got these earrings here carved in metal artisan made um and when you use the term artisan um it typically is representing the arts and crafts movement here again we've got um kind of this rough look um, you know, with it being, um, on the leather, leather cording, having, uh, the use of the metal and, um, the, um, handcraftedness appearance of it. Um, this necessarily wasn't made in the arts and crafts movement. This is more of a revival piece. Um, the arts and crafts movement was from 1880 to 1920. Asterism, a star-like luminous effect affected that reflects light in some gemstones like star sapphires and star garnets. Dense fine parallel inclusions cause light to reflect as a ray perpendicular to these inclusions. These stars can have six rays, four rays, and rarely 12 rays. Asterisms are is more commonly known as a star phenomenon, with the most prized examples occurring in sapphires and rubies. It can, however, also appear in spinel, diopside, beryl, and quartz. This phenomenon is caused by tiny needle-like inclusions, which reflect light onto the surface of the stone. When the light reflects as only one ray, that phenomenon is called a cat's eye. Asterism in mineralogy, star-like figure exhibited in light reflected or transmitted by some crystals. The science behind the asterism is pretty straightforward, caused by inclusions present in the gemstone. Those inclusions commonly consist of rutile needles, or sometimes known as silk in most star gems. Although other inclusions like hematite or magnetite needles also cause star effect in specific gemstones. Consequently, the asterism of the emerald is caused by four light bands, the two six-rayed stars, which are observed in views parallel to the C axis at both ends of the elongated cabochon, consist of three light bands intersecting at angles of 60% to each or 60 degrees to each other. What is the origin of an asterism? Asterism, a group of stars derived from ancient Greek astromos, a marking with stars. From aster, star, aster comes from the Proto-Indo-European root stir of the same meaning, which is also the source of English star and Latin stella. Atomic age jewelry from 1940 to 1960, characterized by reference and response to nuclear science and the atomic bomb. Characteristics of the atomic age are science, space, technology, sleek, smooth curves, edges, lines, Geometric designs like arches, circles, and polygons. In the aftermath of World War II, the United States underwent a period of mass suburbanation. Influences in appearances, futuristic motifs like rockets and space travel, which, will use, which you will see in brooches of this time period. Third, auricular a C-shaped ear shell-like decorative motif. 
Evolving around 1600, the motif was used extensively during the Baroque period, later revived in the Rococo period. It also occurred on an S shape. Last, the term Aurora Borealis, a very thin layer of metallic atoms that have been deposited on the lower surface of the stone. The Latin term for northern lights. AB is an abbreviation for the special finish, which was applied to rhinestones and beads in the early 1950s to make them appear more radiant. The finish was given the name Aurora Borealis, taken from the phenomena sometimes seen in the skies of the northern countries known as the northern lights. The finish is meant to pick up and reflect the colors around it. Beautiful AB rhinestone balls around the middle of the 1950s. Christian Dior turned to Manfred Swarovski's grandson of the, of the founder of Swarovski when he was searching for a new style for crystal and jewelry to complement his new look. Delicately feminine clothes for the new woman of the new era, where fancy stones and chatons were popular, suddenly cut beads became the in thing. The first mass produced Aurora Borealis coated costume jewelry was made available to the public in 1955. This useful milestone will help you date costume jewelry in your family's jewelry boxes or out in the public venues. Any piece with Aurora Borealis coating on a rhinestone can't have been made earlier than 1955. In 1619, Galileo Galilei coined the term Aurora Borealis after Aurora, the Roman goddess of mourning. He had the misconception that the auroras he saw were due to sunlight reflecting from the atmosphere. Corocraft Vendome line used Aurora Borealis crystals. At first, only the wealthy could afford the jewelry made with the stones and beads by, this, by the designers. But it was later licensed for use by other manufacturers such as Corocraft for their Vendome line and, very, and was very popular with women in the 1950s. Later on, more and more plastic beads crept in and the jewelry became less expensive. The glory days of Aurora Borealis fell away over time and by the mid 1960s, it had disappeared. AB vintage jewelry is now popular again with quality pieces from the 1950s being the most prized. I have three examples of the Aurora Borealis, or often referred to as AB coating. Um, it is uh, a coating that is placed on the rhinestones to kind of make this oil slick appearance. Um, as you can see, it adds some fire to the sparkle of the rhinestones. Um, this is a brooch. And this, these are earrings. These have a very light um, AB coating. You have to look at it in certain um, light. And then these are um, heavy on the <laughs> AB coating. You can see there's different colors of purple and uh, greens, pinks. Um, and again, these are coat, it's coating that is placed onto the rhinestone to give it a, like an oil slick appearance.